Good afternoon and bonjour à toutes et à tous. While September, with, with September fast approaching, school reopenings are on the minds of many. Today, I'd like to focus my remarks on the Public Health Agency of Canada's guidance for schools from kindergarten to grade 12. First, I'll begin with the usual numbers update. There have been 118,561 cases of COVID-19 in Canada, including 8,966 deaths. 87% of people have now recovered. Labs across Canada have tested over 4,319,000 people for COVID-19 to date. Over the past week, an average of 48,000 360 people were tested daily, with 1% test positive, and an average of almost 400 cases being reported daily from across the country. Throughout the pandemic, Canadians have made many sacrifices to maintain the well-being of their families. Parents, guardians, students and teachers alike have been anxious to know the back-to-school plans for this year. Now that provinces and territories have unveiled their plans for reopening schools, I know families are having important conversations to determine what works best for their unique needs. I understand this can feel stressful because there are many factors to consider. Now that COVID-19 activity has been brought under manageable control with measures in place to keep it that way, we must now establish a careful balance to keep the infection rate low while minimizing unintended health and social consequences. In striking the balance for school reopening, there are two key knowns we must consider. That in-school learning and socializing is very important for the best long-term outcomes for children. And that we know children generally experience mild symptoms if they do become infected with the novel coronavirus, though some serious health comes have been reported for a small number of children. What we don't know as much about yet is how efficiently children might transmit to others. To date, it appears that children under 10 years are less likely to transmit the virus than older children and adults. However, we need to keep a close eye on the evolving evidence around this. To support administrators of schools from kindergarten to grade 12 and local public health authorities in the safe resumption of in-school education programming during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Public Health Agency of Canada has developed guidance in collaboration with Canadian public health experts and stakeholders. The guidance recommends a layered approach consisting of multiple mitigation measures to reduce the risk of COVID-19 spread, including decreasing the number of interactions with others and increasing the safety of interactions. As well, to support local decision-making, the guidance outlines strategies for how schools can implement physical distancing in the classroom, maintain proper hand and respiratory hygiene, and maintain social bubbles. Given that physical distancing may not always be possible in school settings, it is important to layer multiple measures to reduce the risk of COVID-19 spread. And this includes providing alternatives to in-person learning, as well as adding additional layers of protection such as the use of non-medical masks by staff and students. This guidance document should be used alongside guidance from provincial and territorial health authorities, ministries of education, and indigenous community governance structures. School reopening plans developed in your area take into account local epidemiology. Public health and educational authorities will closely monitor the situation and adapt public health measures as needed. Remember that each parent or guardian is making back to school plans to best suit the unique needs of their family. There is no one size fits all solution. I urge Canadians to support your community of parents, students, teachers and administrators as schools work to reopen this academic year. Just as we have been at every step along the way, we're all in this next step together. By working together, not only can we help students of all ages thrive in what will certainly be an unconventional school year, but we will also be able to protect those members of our community most at risk of serious illness. Thank you. Bonjour. À l'approche du mois de septembre, la réouverture des écoles inquiète pas mal de monde. Aujourd'hui, nous aimerions vous parler plus précisément 
des recommandations de l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada pour les écoles de la maternelle à la douzième année. Commençons, comme d'habitude, par les derniers chiffres. On a signalé 118 561 cas de COVID-19 au Canada, dont 8 966 décès. Les personnes infectées, 87 sont rétablies. À ce jour, des laboratoires de partout au pays ont analysé les tests de dépistage de la COVID-19 de plus de 4 319 000 personnes. Au cours de la dernière semaine, en moyenne, 48 360 personnes ont passé un test de dépistage chaque jour, dont 1 ont reçu un résultat positif. Enfin, il y a en moyenne près de 400 nouveaux cas signalés chaque jour pour l'ensemble du pays. Tout au long de la pandémie, les Canadiens ont fait de nombreux sacrifices pour assurer le bien-être de leurs familles. Les parents, les gardiens, les élèves, les enseignants avaient tous hâte de connaître les plans de retour en classe pour cette année. Maintenant que les provinces et les territoires ont dévoilé leurs plans de réouverture des écoles, on sait que les familles réfléchissent sérieusement à ce qui convient le mieux à leur situation. Nous comprenons que cela puisse être angoissant compte tenu de nombreux facteurs à considérer. Maintenant que l'activité relative à la COVID-19 est sous contrôle grâce aux mesures que nous avons prises pour y parvenir, nous devons établir un équilibre rigoureux pour que le taux d'infection demeure faible, tout en réduisant au minimum les conséquences non voulues sur la santé et sur le plan social. Pour trouver un juste équilibre en vue de la réouverture des écoles, nous devons prendre en considération deux faits connus. D'abord, nous savons que l'apprentissage en classe et la socialisation sont très importants pour la réussite scolaire à long terme des enfants. Puis, nous savons que les enfants présentent en général des symptômes légers quand ils sont infectés par le nouveau coronavirus, même si quelques-uns ont eu des problèmes de santé graves. Ce que nous ne savons pas encore très bien, c'est dans quelle mesure les enfants peuvent transmettre l'infection à d'autres. À ce jour, il semble que les enfants de moins de 10 ans soient moins susceptibles de transmettre le virus que les enfants plus vieux et les adultes. Nous devons toutefois surveiller de près les données probantes qui évoluent à ce sujet. Pour aider les directeurs d'école de la maternelle à la douzième année et les autorités de santé publique locales à reprendre le programme pédagogique en classe en toute sécurité durant la pandémie de COVID-19, l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada a rédigé un document d'orientation en collaboration avec des experts et des intervenants dans le domaine de la santé publique au pays. Nous recommandons une approche à plusieurs niveaux comportant de nombreuses mesures d'atténuation visant à réduire le risque de propagation de la COVID-19, notamment la diminution du nombre d'interactions avec les autres et l'augmentation de la sécurité des interactions. Et afin d'appuyer la prise de décision locale, nous recommandons des stratégies pour appliquer la distanciation physique dans les classes pour assurer le lavage des mains et l'hygiène respiratoire et pour maintenir des bulles sociales. Parce que ce ne sera pas toujours possible de pratiquer la distanciation physique dans les écoles, il est important d'agir à des multiples niveaux pour réduire le risque de propagation de la COVID-19. On pourrait, par exemple, offrir des solutions de rechange à l'apprentissage en personne ainsi qu'ajouter des couches de protection comme le port de masques non médicaux par le personnel et les élèves. Ce document d'orientation devrait être utilisé parallèlement aux recommandations des autorités de santé publique provinciales et territoriales, des ministères de l'Éducation et des structures de gouvernance des communautés autochtones. Les plans de réouverture des écoles prévus dans votre région tiennent compte de l'épidémiologie locale. Les autorités de santé publique et les autorités scolaires suivront de près la situation et adopteront les mesures sanitaires au besoin. N'oubliez pas que les parents ou les gardiens prévoient le retour en classe selon les besoins particuliers de leur famille. Il n'y a pas de solution universelle. Nous encourageons vivement les Canadiens à soutenir leur communauté de, des parents, d'élèves, d'enseignants et des directeurs alors que les écoles se préparent à leur rentrée scolaire. Comme nous l'avons toujours fait jusqu'à maintenant, 
C'est ensemble que nous franchirons la prochaine étape. Ainsi, non seulement nous aiderons les élèves de tous âges à réussir une année scolaire sûrement non conventionnelle, mais nous aiderons aussi les membres de notre collectivité les plus à risque d'être gravement malades. Merci. We will now open the floor and the telephone line to question. Uh, for those who uh, are asking questions in the room, we ask that you make your uh, way to the uh, over the freestanding mic. Today, we'll start in the room. Uh, just a reminder that you can ask your questions in one of the two languages. Officiel. Uh, we also ask that you uh, limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Le devoir. Oui, bonjour. Hélène Buzetti du Devoir. Euh, Dr. Nou, euh, ce n'est pas très clair pour moi. Est-ce que vous recommandez le port du masque dans les écoles? Est-ce que vous en faites une recommandation officielle? Oui, avant de, de répondre précisément aux questions, c'est important de, de toujours euh, souligner le point que le, le, les lignes directrices, euh, notre document d'orientation, c'est toujours, euh, euh, toujours important d'être utilisé parallèlement aux lignes directrices et aussi euh, euh, les recommandations de, de, des autorités euh, de, des provinces et territoires. C'est toujours pour être quelque chose de supplémentaire, complémentaire, mais pas pour remplacer euh, quest ce qui se passe euh, euh, aux provinces et territoires. Le deuxième point aussi que euh, je, je, euh, je peux faire, c'est que c'est très important aussi qu'il faut être conscient de quoi les circonstances, le contexte à l'échelle locale et euh, en particulier l'épidémiologie locale. Parce qu'il faut être flexible, parce que si l'épidémiologie a beaucoup de, 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 de circulation du virus, c'est complètement une autre situation comparée à peut-être une situation où il n'y a, a pas beaucoup, uh, beaucoup de, 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 de cas dans, dans une communauté. Donc, uh, pour nous autres, uh, en fin de compte, uh, ce qu'on ce qu dit dans notre uh, ligne directrice, c'est oui. Uh, avec avec uh, l'évidence et les, les données probantes, on, 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 on dit que sûrement avec, uh, en, en prenant en considération aussi l'épidémie locale, que, uh, avec uh, l'évidence que les enfants qui ont moins, de moins de 10 ans uh, peut-être ne transmettent pas facilement les virus, mais les enfants de plus de 10 ans uh, peut-être uh, transmettent comme les adultes, que oui, en général, on, on recommande que le port de masque, c'est une haute couche, une haute, une haute, une haute euh, mesure euh, supplémentaire pour euh, prévenir euh, la, la, la propagation du virus. Mais ce n'est pas seulement le, le, seul, le seul composant, parce qu'on dit qu'il y a toutes sortes d'autres euh, aspects de composants dans un plan. Euh, par exemple, peut-être des, des barrières physiques, euh, euh, des, des, des groupes euh, peut-être euh, euh, vraiment dans des petites bulles sociales aussi, euh, euh, peut-être dans les des couloirs, l'utilisation euh, le, 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 des de, 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 de voiles, des sens euh, de, de, de direction unique. Donc, ce n'est pas seulement une question des masques, mais euh, en, en total, avec tous les, tous les autres aspects, oui, euh, on recommande euh, le port de masque euh, peut-être euh, à, à pour les enfants plus de 10 ans. C'est ça. Donc, c'est une recommandation. Moins de 10 ans, peut-être pas, mais plus de 10 ans, ça serait une bonne idée de, de l'imposer dans les écoles. Oui, mais ça dépend aussi avec les, 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 les facteurs, le contexte et surtout l'épidémiologie à l'échelle locale. Parce que je peux imaginer dans une région, une, une communauté, s'il n'y a pas vraiment beaucoup de cas, Peut-être qu'on peut être plus flexible, on peut-être on encourage, et peut-être que ce n'est pas nécessaire d'être une mesure comme dit, obligatoire, mais dans une autre communauté avec peut-être plus de circulation, plus de cas euh, dans cette région, c'est peut-être plus important euh, de mettre aussi en vigueur peut-être plus, euh, plus obligatoire, on peut dire, euh, le port de masque. Thank you, Doctor. Next question, CTV. Ian Wood, CTV News. Um, in British Columbia, the number of active cases in the last month has more than doubled. And British Columbia has been lauded as having handled the crisis quite well. But things are now relaxing there. People are gathering um, in larger groups. Um, does this concern you? And are you confident that the measures governments have taken in provinces across this country to allow larger groups to gather are in the best interest of public health? So, as everyone knows, I work very closely with all the chief medical officers of health in Canada, including, of course, Dr. Henry in British Columbia. 
And we know and we, we knew that when you reopen social and economic spaces, we will expect cases. We will expect an increase in cases. The key public health strategy is to keep that low and manageable and the ability to detect, test, isolate cases, quarantine the contacts. So the speed at which you can then find the contacts and quarantine them is the cornerstone of public health uh, measures uh, as, as we combat the pandemic. So that's the concept across the country is to keep the activity low and manageable based on your local context. And um, so outbreaks are being detected and being managed. So we're watching very carefully, of course, on cases where you can't link them, you you know there's there's a potential for community spread, where the chains of transmission are unclear. Across the country, there are different kinds of outbreaks going on, and that those are being tracked. Um, good news is that long-term care facility outbreaks are very low. They they are still there, but keeping that very important uh, vulnerable population. Uh, protected is completely top priority and other vulnerable settings um, and congregate settings, including workplaces. So paying a lot of attention to that. What is becoming quite obvious across the country, though, is that with the increase in um, or the loosening up of restrictions, is a younger population of adults uh, under the age of 40, but that 20 to 29 year old age group is the, the, the number of cases are increasing in that age group. And that's where uh, all the messaging and the sort of sh flexibly changing policies at the local level is being done right now to try and keep that uh, number uh, reduced. And so it is. Um, Something that, again, I always ask all Canadians, including young Canadians, that this is really important that you uh, follow public health measures. In British Columbia, I think uh, Dr. Henry has very well articulated some of the activities is private sort of parties. And um, in a, I think it, in, in, in Kelowna, for example, people got a little too enthusiastic. That cannot happen. Right now, the good thing is a number of cases have come down a bit this week compared to the preceding two. Maybe people were quite enthusiastic after Canada Day, let's just say, and kept going on with their sort of that mentality. If we want schools to reopen safely and people going back to um, increase um, sort of attendance at universities, we have to right now keep the transmission down, because that's the sure way that you can enable educational institutions uh, to reopen in as safe a manner as possible. So based on everything that I've seen, all medical officers said we're keeping in close on everything. Right now is manageable. We, we can detect our cases. Uh, but this virus, as I've said, is in, in our backyards, so we can't let our guards down. Thank you, Doctor. Follow up. And this this can be for both of you. Um, granted, what we've seen over the summer uh, in the loosening of restrictions and allowing people to get back to some sense of normalcy, what concerns you? What what have you seen aside from, you know, the obvious of people gathering in larger groups? What have you seen in terms of human actions? that you think is a cause for concern or alarm as we move forward? Maybe I'll start first this time. Um, I, I think Dr. Tam and I have I've, I've, I've said this uh, previously, and I think I was the one who uh, I think uh, a few weeks ago first uh, noted or, or, or uh, made the point that uh, what is concerning, I think, for me, uh, what, from what I've seen, is what's happening among uh, the young folks, the young adults, less than 39. And uh, as a... Uh, as uh, we've seen uh, the data come in, uh, what is concerning is that uh, the young folks are, are, are becoming an increasing, uh, increasingly large proportion of the cases. And uh, what, what, uh, what I see is that uh, 
it's uh, three factors in play, you know, as I've mentioned before. Uh, first of all, I think, you know, after the winter, everyone, I think, was been, uh, been a bit tired of being a sort of, you know, <laughs> confined indoors. And so the fatigue factor, I think, certainly is in play for the population in general, but also especially for the young folks wanting to get out, meet their friends and socialize. So that's number one. Uh, the second factor, I think, is the invincibility factor. I think uh, young folks, uh, uh, by and large, uh, think that they can, quote, get away with anything, that uh, the consequences are, aren't really that serious for them. And I think, unfortunately, it's a bit of a, a double-edged sword. Uh, uh, the data so far does indicate that uh, young folks, uh, uh, by and large, if they do get infected, they don't suffer as serious consequences uh, uh, medically uh, compared to other age groups. Um, and so, therefore, they might think that's, that it's fine for them. But as we all know, they're part of our society. And they actually uh, obviously go to the workplace, and they have maybe uh, older parents and grandparents, and that is, I think is the is the is the risk is that if they uh, unknowingly transmit it, uh, because many of them may, may also be asymptomatic, that would also then uh, uh, increase the risk of a uh, transmission to to more vulnerable. Uh, uh, groups of uh, individuals. So that's, I think, uh, the second issue. And then the third one, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as you mentioned, is that uh, with the opening up of, of uh, society, it's always a tricky balance in terms of uh, what, uh, you know, what is the right uh, sort of level or, 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 or pace of opening up uh, bars, restaurants, uh, different sectors uh, versus uh, uh, keeping an eye on, on sort of the number of cases and keeping it in check. And I think uh, a part of it, I think, for maybe the young folks, but maybe uh, everyone in general, is that uh, by, by opening up society and opening up the bars and restaurants, people think, oh, it, things are kind of back to normal or sort of, you know, the new normal. And so you mean, they may not necessarily go to a bar or restaurant, but they think, oh, well, you know, if the bars and restaurants are open, then why, the, why not can I have a, a, a party with, you know, 20, 30, or 50 of my closest friends? And so... All those factors are in play, and I think, uh, as Dr. Tam and I have mentioned, is that uh, we recognize in terms of getting the messages out there, uh, uh, keeping Canadians, as say, you know, foot on the gas in terms of uh, maintaining public health measures, uh, things that protect themselves and others. Uh, we need to maybe look at uh, different uh, approaches, uh, sort of like segmented uh, market approaches. You know, how do we maybe uh, reach young folks uh, using different platforms and approaches compared to other age groups? So that, from my my personal perspective, is what I see as a as the major sort of challenge ahead. No, I think um, going along with the evidence and the epidemiology, I think uh, absolutely what Dr. New has said, we continuously have to do more for vulnerable populations. Every one of those long-term care facilities, senior homes have to have all the measures and supports in place to prevent Primarily, you know, the top thing is to prevent introduction and uh, make sure that any, even one case, is rapidly detected and the testing is uh, conducted rapidly to contain the spread. So that still um, concerns me because, you know, we need everybody to do that well. And we know that the underlying factors uh, have been there for a long time. So it's not, you know, overnight um, that certain things can be uh, um, turned around, but we need to keep at it. Um, and also other vulnerable populations. Well, you actually mentioned, I think you asked the questions about temporary farm workers, workers who are in um, certain um, uh, work environments uh, where you need to continuously work towards supporting their living conditions so to support them so that they don't have to go to work if they're sick, not to move between um, uh, workplaces uh, if they're serving essential services to vulnerable populations, and um, continuous uh, support for those who are more disadvantaged and marginalized uh, as well. I think we talked a little bit about the fact that you know fatigue is definitely an issue but I think continuing to leverage on strengths and innovation of where Canada has been so far, we, we've done very well and we need to just sort of keep at it. We are planning, of course, um, you know, hoping for the best is one thing, but planning for a, a larger resurgence, planning for the influenza season coming up, I think uh, is something that we've all uh, come together as provinces and territories with us to plan ahead. So the fall period is, um, I think, a period of challenge, but uh, we can. there's lots we can do to reduce those risks. Um, 
I think making sure that people get their information from credible sources continues to be uh, a challenge. So um, I said in a couple of my previous uh, press um, uh, presses that um, you know it's very easy for misinformation and to sort of propagate in a social media world, and that everyone uh, needs to learn how to appropriately identify um, credible information, but also not disseminate uh, ones that are not um, aligned with the knowledge as we know it. And so another ongoing challenge for all of us is that we're still in the middle of a pandemic learning about the virus. And so we will learn more and there may be changes in how public health will provide us advice. And uh, so I think just to expect that we will flexibly incorporate um, more knowledge and our advice might change. So thank you for the question. Thank you, doctors. Prochaine question, La Presse canadienne. L'inadible La Presse canadienne. Euh, J'aimerais revenir sur la question des directives que vous allez donner cet après-midi. On n'a pas le document. Pouvez-vous nous dire de façon précise qu'est-ce qu'il y a dans ces directives-là? Bon, vous dites port de masque, des, 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 des sens uniques dans les écoles. Pouvez-vous nous donner comme quelques, quelques éléments précis de ces directives-là? Merci pour la question. Oui, je, euh, en attendant, je pense que c'est peut-être même maintenant que c'est publié, c'est en ligne, peut-être peut okay. pas encore, mais euh, il, y a, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de bonnes euh, composantes dans de, des directives. J'ai une ébauche ici. Euh, euh, certainement, le, le porte de masse, c'est un élément, mais il y a aussi beaucoup des autres, euh, des autres éléments aussi. Euh, je ne sais pas comment... Euh, ce que je peux dire, c'est, euh, comme j'ai déjà constaté, que les lignes directrices, les lignes directrices que nous, nous avons élaborées euh, de l'Agence de santé publique, c'est toujours quelque chose qui euh, doit être utilisé parallèlement avec aussi... Euh... Oui. J'ai juste besoin de choses un peu précises. Là. Dans ces, enfin, ces lignes directrices-là, c'est qu'est-ce que vous avez de précis comme conseil à donner aux écoles? Il y a beaucoup de détails. On, on, on parle de, de, de toutes sortes de, des options parce que, comme on dit, euh, on a dit que c'est une question aussi pour euh, peut-être limiter, comme c'est comme pratique, euh, le, le nombre d'interactions entre les élèves et aussi euh, les enseignants. Et aussi, euh, s'il y a des interactions, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour aussi pour euh, 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 avoir des interactions plus comme des sécuritaires? Donc, euh, euh, les, les options comme euh, peut-être garder un groupe des étudiants dans une bulle, euh, euh, peut-être euh, aussi euh, avoir des, 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 comme des, euh, des, des sens uniques, des directions dans des couloirs, dans les écoles. Euh, peut-être qu'on peut utiliser euh, même les barrières physiques pour... Euh, Uh, garder, uh, comme ici, uh, 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 des distances aussi, uh, uh, peut-être éviter la, la, la propagation du virus. C'est toutes les choses un peu, comme on dit, limiter uh, les interactions et aussi uh, avec les interactions, comme on dit, uh, c'est uh, sûr, sûrement une, une, une autre couche ou une autre, une autre uh, couche de protection, le porte de masque. Et on a déjà élaboré uh, plusieurs fois notre recommandation, moins de 10 ans, aussi plus de 10 ans en général. Merci. Euh, et puis, mon autre question, euh, donc ça, c'est pour les écoles primaires, secondaires. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez fait des réflexions pour les cégeps, les universités qui, elles, ont décidé de presque toutes de tout faire en, euh, à distance? Est-ce que le, le même genre de, de directive pourrait s'appliquer? Parce que là aussi, l'enseignement, la socialisation, les jeunes adultes, ils sont assez... Leur, leur santé mentale est assez précaire en ce moment. Est-ce que vous avez réfléchi à ça aussi? Oui, nous avons déjà, je pense, élaboré aussi des lignes directrices pour, pour les universités. Euh, on sait que c'est aussi comme les adultes, il y a aussi des, 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 des aspects un peu uniques, comme peut-être euh, les logements, euh, comme à, à l'université. Euh, mais les mêmes principes de, de santé publique pour limiter, le, comme dit, le nombre d'interactions, mais aussi le, le, le type des interactions, ça, ça s'applique aussi aux étudiants, euh, aussi au cégep et aussi à l'université. Tim, if I can hear you on the importance of socialization, like the mental health of young adults now. The, same, the, same. the parents' basement uh, learning from afar. This is September. Yes, yeah, so it's um, something that public health is very um, um, sort of engaged in because, as we said, um, you know, people have spent many months now um, 
sort of um, social distancing and definitely physical distancing, but I do mean social distancing in 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 that sense. And yes, young people for their uh, mental and physical health. Um, you know, we need to get them back to uh, education as safely as possible. And so, um, you know, I think one thing that is, I think I want to stress though, is that an element of anxiety and stress is actually expected. We've just been through, an, we're going through an unprecedented uh, pandemic. So some of that can be managed through different um, tools and even online um, uh, resources, um, sort of uh, telehealth. Uh, we've we sort of increased that that amount of uh, telehealth and other support. And so I think, um, you know, on the one hand, we actually think young, youth and young adults are quite resilient, and many of them have managed to cope very well. What one, one is most concerned about are people in um, more disadvantaged situations. If there are uh, issues where there is um, family violence, for um, you've seen some of the data showing that there are in fact more cases, more uh, impact on uh, social economically disadvantaged neighborhoods. Some youth actually have mental health challenges already or learning difficulties. And so it is with these um, um, youth and young adults in mind that I think um, you know public health certainly want to do everything it can to enable um, them to go back safely to their workplaces or their uh, universities. With the uh, guidance, um, I think that Dr. New mentioned, which is already published, Universities have to come up with plans to their local public health departments and uh, provincial public health and ministries of education with how they would open up their educational spaces as, in a, as safe a manner as possible. But I do believe that uh, just as schools, uh, youth and um, young adults, um, this is the time to want to socialize and interact, uh, but they can learn to do it. Um, safely as well, uh, following um, the guidance of limiting uh, your social cycle circles. If you're going to, you know, restaurants or pubs, follow the rules really, because that's what's setting off some of the outbreaks. Barbecues, the virus is in the back backyard. Think twice and maintain social distancing, hand hygiene, etc. You can do, you you can do it and. I think your innovation, your strength on uh, how do you uh, manage through this pandemic um, would be, you know, we would love to hear from, from everyone. Some, some of the online stuff that youth have done have been incredible. So the innovation of how you have, you know, um, some of the games, singing, all sorts of things online, they've invented those. Um, I think in the they can invent how you innovate in uh, actual physical interactions as well in the safe way. Et c'est Dr. Nyo, justement pour ajouter aussi les, des choses pratiques dans les lignes directrices. Euh, si on veut aussi limiter peut-être le nombre d'interactions, si c'est vraiment euh, pour les écoles considérées comme euh, les rassemblements de toute l'école, les assemblées, peut-être les, les, même des activités sportives, des équipes, qu'est-ce qu'il qu qu faut faire euh, si c'est une décision vraiment à l'échelle locale? pour les écoles, mais c'est uh, tous les, les, les facteurs à uh, considérer, si on va peut-être vraiment... Uh, aussi, donc aussi, selon l'épidémie locale, uh, diminuer les risques uh, de la propagation. Merci. Thank you, doctors. We will now turn to the phone operator. Thank you, merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. We have a first question from Mia Rapson from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm wondering, in, in terms of the, the kids and, and your comments that 
at the moment, the evidence suggests that kids under 10 are not spreading the virus as much. What evidence we are using to base that on? I've seen a lot of people wondering how comprehensive that evidence can be, given that kids have not been exposed and or had a lot of chances to, to spread this virus in the last six months. Yes, so that's a very important point in that, um, you know, when the pandemic first started, we didn't know too much about the virus. Schools closed as much of the community was uh, spaces were also closed. So the chances of uh, gathering information um, is was limited. Certainly in household transmission studies at the beginning, um, it suggested that it was more the adults uh, bringing in the virus and transmitting it rather than the kids spreading it to the adults. Now, there's more uh, information, for, uh, international uh, context, for example, studies from uh, South Korea, which suggests that um, you know, children under the age of 10 do, do spread. There's no zero transmission risk situation. Um, all age groups can spread the virus. But it appears that uh, children under the age of 10 um, ha- uh, spread the virus less efficiently than those older, th- older than the age of 10 and uh, adults. Those over the age of 10, uh, those studies suggest that they, tr- they can transmit as well as an adult. So that's some of the um, evidence that we have taken into account And the current, um, you know, I I always consider them as interim guidance. Um, There are more, um, you know, studies about viral load, you know, how much virus is in the back of someone's nose and and, and, um, nasal pharynx, what we call. Um, That is still uh, under interpretation, but it certainly is a a signal to us that we need to watch um, what happens when children begin to interact more. Um, and I think it's difficult in the, in the global literature, of course, we, ha- we are seeing uh, outbreaks that can happen at schools, but also countries where schools have opened and very successfully. There are cases, but they're manageable. Um, I think in the literature, um, you tend to also see what went wrong. Uh, we also need to document what successfully uh, has gone right as well. So I think um, all I can say is that every medical office of health, together with the education department, school boards, I'm sure are thinking through this in an extremely methodical way. And we will learn more um, as we go along. Uh, the numbers of cases so far in Canada, you know, you've, you probably can access our website and look at the number of cases, etc. And they, they have been um, you know, under 19 um, represent a very small proportion of our cases and um, what, only 1% of the hospitalizations and 1% of ICU emissions and really um, no, no deaths. There was one that was uh, sort of um, maybe not related to COVID-19 itself, but in someone who was identified to have COVID-19 um, who passed away. So, so we know that under those sorts of circumstances, um, people can cautiously, methodically, safely open schools, but we have to monitor what actually happens when we do. Thank you, Dr. Thank you for Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we also understand that the Canadian Football League has submitted their health and safety protocols to Health Canada. They're hoping that they might get approval uh, to have some sort of season this fall. Just wondering if uh, if the assessment, you've made the assessment on that and, and when they might expect uh, and when Canadians might expect a response on whether it would be approved. It's Dr. Yu. Thank you very much for the question. Yes, uh, we have had, uh, or we still ha- are having ongoing discussions with the Canadian Football League, uh, again, in the area of professional sports. Uh, what I can say is that uh, what has been submitted to us, I think, uh, uh, is, I think, uh, encouraging in that uh, they're going, I think, with uh, the similar kind of model that we had for the NHL in terms of, quote, a hub city and using sort of a, a tight uh, a quarantine-type bubble. Obviously, uh, there's still uh, uh, details to be worked out, and uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, they've also had discussions, and we've had discussions as well with Manitoba health officials. Uh, from, I think, the Manitoba health perspective, I think uh, they're comfortable with what uh, I think has uh, uh, been put forward so far, but uh, like I say, there's still some, some, uh, some details and some other aspects we need to discuss. But in principle, I would say that uh, so far, I think uh, 
It's the, it's the same as we had for the NHL, that uh, if there are players coming from, let's say, outside the country, uh, certainly from a federal perspective, it's all about uh, crossing the border, uh, doing your 14-day your quarantine uh, sort of in a, in a safe manner. And then after that, the actual sort of uh, how the season might unfold in a very uh, tightly controlled circumstance with regular testing, uh, not really interaction with the general public, and uh, also, as they say, no fans in the stands. And I think uh, it's something we can work with. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Is there any other questions on the phone? There are no further questions on the telephone lines. Given that there's no other questions on the phone, if uh, we have a couple more minutes, if you want to do another round of questions in the room. Yes, no? Okay, thank you. C'est ce qui m'a fait la conférence de presse pour aujourd'hui.